Yolanda Cove. I'm an instructor at the Columbia Art Center. I teach sumi painting, which is also known as the Chinese brush painting. It is very similar to watercolor, however, I use a different kind of brush. It's a round brush with a point, and with a brush and watercolor paint, you can create paintings like the ones you see in front of you. These are very traditional Chinese watercolor paintings. This is a lotus, and I do this by double loading paint onto the brush to get the lights and darks. It's a little bit different from Western watercolor in that you do this in one, one stroke. You load all the paint onto the brush and you do it once. And this style is called the spontaneous style. This is a grape scene. It's a traditional subject. It's also done with the same double loading of paint. And the key here is to leave a white space the white space, which is also known as the negative space, is just as important as the colored space. This one is a lotus also, but it's done in a different style from this one. So you can see it's also using the same technique, but a different color palette. You can create your own style and your own uh, brush strokes. This is um, also spontaneous style. It's, it's a painting of water, water girls, village water girls. Um, this is something you can do in, in, out of your imagination after you learn how to do, how to load the paint onto the brush and um, create your own composition. This painting is a painting of a pomegranate which is also a traditional subject and I use um, a little bit of black ink it's Sumia ink, it's a different ink from um, regular rapidograph ink. And it gives you a different effect, a very traditional subdued look. This painting is of a, a tiger lily with a dragonfly. Dragonflies are very popular subjects and it just adds an extra touch to the painting. You use a much smaller, finer brush and you get this kind of uh, stroke. This one is uh, goldfishes. Um, it's done in the using the same kind of brush and same colors um, with the brush strokes, so you can vary it a little bit to get uh, different angles and get different effects. What you see down here is my stamp or seal or it's also known as a chop. Every artist um, signs their painting by using their own seal. And it's, it's my name in Chinese. Uh, it's usually three characters. Some artists have four characters in their names. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do this form of art and the materials and supplies that I use. This is the typical s setup for painting uh, Sumia style. You will need some brushes. These are specialized Asian brushes, and they look like this when they are dry. After you wet your brush, the bristles should come to a very fine point, and this is how you can tell if you have a nice uh, brush. The brush is very important because everything, all the colors are loaded into the brush, and this is a painting about the brush strokes. So this, this is one type of brush and it's used to do um, orchids and bamboos and uh, the kind of style that I just showed you, it's, this is used for the spontaneous style. Uh, rice paper comes in all kinds of um, absorbency and the correct one for the spontaneous style is called Shuan, S-H-U-A-N. And there's two sides to it. The front side, the, the way you can tell which is the front is that you fold it over and you feel it with your finger. The, the front side is very smooth, the back side is rough. So this is the front side. You will also need to have um, a piece of felt to absorb the excess water that seeps through the rice paper. And then you should have some paints um, basic colors, 
one yellow, one blue, one red um, to get started. You can expand on that after you're comfortable with the style. The yellow that I use typically is cadmium yellow and I have um, ultramarine blue and this, these are student grade. Uh, I don't recommend you spend a lot of money to buy professional grade because we use a lot of colors and um, the professional grade will just go to waste. Okay, you'll need some kind of palette. Um, as, it's got to be as big as um, this plate. You can use a butcher's tray and I'll show you the reason why we need a large palette. Okay, today I'm going to show you how to do bamboos and this is the end result. Um, we'll start with the uh, first stroke. Every painting has a sequence of strokes and it's not arbitrary. So we start with the main subject and that would be the um, stem, the main trunk of the bamboo. Okay. So before you start, you have to make sure your palette, your color and water tray is in the correct place because you don't want to be rearranging everything during in between strokes. Um, start with a clean brush. Okay, this is, this is a uh, water container for Sumia painting and there's three wells and the reason you have three is th these are for the colored um, wells and this is clear water. Try to cle keep this well clean before you start and in between uh, different colors. So you start with the lightest color, which would be the yellow. Um, the key is to load the paint completely, cover the, the bristles completely by rotating it. And then you, um, this is the first load. And the next load, the double loading, would be the blue, the second shade. And you do this the same way by rotating and remember to put your brush on a slant so that it absorbs all the colors. Don't just go to the tip because that's not going to carry you far enough. Um, so cover that bristle with blue. Halfway, just cover it halfway. Still keep a little bit of the yellow at the top. You can see the colors. There's, there's clear water, there's yellow, and then there's blue. And at the very tip, here you um, just dip into a little bit of black. Don't let that overpower the other colors. Okay. This is a, bit, a very wet brush. Um, and you can tell because there could be another drop of water if I let it stay upright long enough. Okay, so the first stroke is the trunk. And make sure you're sitting in front of your paper and you're aligned so that you get a straight stroke. Okay, there's enough paint on here to do the next stroke and to finish this entire trunk. Okay. So, this is the effect you get. You get the shading, you, you see the yellow on the far left, my left, and then the green and then the blue. And that's done uh, in one stroke. You don't go back, you don't worry about the dry brush. And we're ready for the second um, stroke. Now here you have to reload your brush, reload the color onto the brush again. Um, because I've used up all the paint, I just add a little bit of water to this, wet the brush, start all over again, same process. Cover the bristles completely with paint and go to the next shade. You should take your time, don't rush this step. So try to match the color scheme on the original trunk. Make sure and you can test it out by using, using that paper towel, see if the colors are close. Okay. 
So these colors are pretty close, and um, I, you know, I'm I'm pretty happy with this. And and the only way you can get the colors very close is if you take your time and load the colors slowly. Okay, so that's the first step, and that's the main subject. We're going to move on to leaves. Leaves are similar to um, the color loading is similar to the trunks. Okay, so you start with yellow again, and take your time. Make sure you um, evenly cover the brush. And this is very easy to do: is to get clumps on it. So you want to smooth this out, make it all uniform, just by rotating and working the paint into the bristle. And then do the blue paint. And the color is blending within the bristle. And that's how you get the brilliant, luminescent colors. Okay. So the second step is to paint the leaves. And you don't want to cover the entire paper with all leaves. Um, remember I said that the negative space is important, so just do leaves at strategic places. And as you paint, you'll see that it starts off very dark and then it lightens up. Don't worry about the light part because the light leaves are just as important as the dark leaves because they're further back in the background. So um, the second step is painting the leaves and you just place them uh, strategically. After you do the leaves, you can move on to painting the uh, minor branches like this one and I'll just finish this drawing. Okay, so that's the third step. I added shoots to it. So the, the way you place the bamboo shoots is that they come off of the base of the drawing and you don't want them to go straight out. Uh, you want to keep them slightly slanted, you know, maybe like between 15 and 20 degrees from the main trunk because that's how the uh, plant actually grows. And then you want to have these shoots come off of the joints. They're segmented as well, just like the large trunks. And you just do these very light, quick strokes to make them come off of the joints. So these strokes are darker in between the trunk lines, and that's, that's the finishing touch. So all I did for the finishing touches is to add these, um, like an S shape stroke. And after that, you're finished. You should let the painting dry completely before you put your uh, signature or your stamp on here. I'm an instructor with the Columbia Art Center, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, hope you will register and see you in class.